I know our last few videos have been on using internet in your van, which isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I wanted to share this one quickly. So if you want to, you can grab yourself a bargain. So can you actually get a good quality 4G MiFi with external antenna for less than 50 quid? Stick with us to find out. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I know what you didn't like. With 4G Wi-Fi kits specifically for most homes ranging from £149 to more than £200, which really are just an external antenna and a 4G router, I wanted to see just how cheaply you could put together your own and how it would perform. Now it's possible these kits come with pre-configured and with better support and advice if you hit any technical hitches, but with my target total price being less than £50, it's a substantial saving. My first ports of call were Amazon, eBay and some independent suppliers to see what was available, but it seems to be getting harder and harder to get a reasonably priced unlocked MiFi unit that has external antenna connections. And though you could still make quite a saving with some of these compared to the motorhome specific kits, the prices just for the MiFi were more than the budget I'd set for everything. So I jumped on AliExpress to see what MiFi unit with external antenna connections I could import. I limited my search to known makes used by mobile phone networks and settled on this ZTE 910 for the princely sum of £27.84. When selecting an imported MiFi, do make sure that you are ordering one that covers the European frequencies, as these do differ slightly, but they're usually well marked up. With standard AliExpress shipping, VAT and a first time order discount, the total cost came to £34.41, with delivery expecting to take between 20 and 40 days, so I sat back to wait. With regular tracking updates, I could see as the package was dispatched, left China, arrived in the UK, cleared customs and then it arrived safely at my home, with no duty to pay, taking only 13 days from order to delivery. So let's take a look at what we've got. It's generically packed. Includes a USB lead, but there isn't a charger plug. It does seem to be new, still having the screen protector on and with no signs of wear and tear. The logo on the device suggests it was branded for the Telstra network in Australia. The unit seems pretty robust and well built. We've got a micro USB to charge it alongside the antenna connectors under protective covers. And on the other side, we have the power and WPS buttons. Under this cover, there's a full size SIM slot and the reset button. We've got a colour screen and finally on the back we have details of the default Wi-Fi name and password. There are no instructions in the box but these can easily be downloaded online. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop in my Smarty SIM card. I'm using a SIM adapter to increase the size from the Nano SIM that my existing MiFi uses to a full size SIM. But when you get a new SIM from Smarty or most other networks, it will most likely be full sized and can be popped out if you want a mini or nano SIM for a different device. We choose Smarty's unlimited plan for our MiFi because at just £20 a month we don't have to worry about what we use. There's no restrictions on tethering, throttling or a need for a contract so if you're not going to use it for a month or if a better deal comes up you just don't pay. 
They use the three network in the UK, which has good coverage in our experience. EU roaming is included, but there is a data cap of 20 gigabytes a month. If you don't need unlimited data, they also do plans of 30 gigabytes for £10 and 50 gigabytes for £15. If you want to give Smarty a try, you'll get a free month after your first month if you use the link in the video description. And if it doesn't work out for you, then you can cancel at any time. So with the sim safely installed, let's switch on the MiFi. As you can see, it boots up and looking at the screen, it appears to have connected successfully to the three network. But let's connect up to a device and see if it's got connection to the web. To start with, I'm going to use a laptop. So once we've connected to the network, we can pop into the browser and check we've got a connection to the internet. I also tried the unit with a GIFGAF SIM on the O2 network and again it works straight away with no configuration needed. From a laptop you can enter the MiFi settings by simply navigating to m.home in the browser. I did have to check the instructions that I downloaded to get the default administrator password which is password. Now you can see we are in and able to carry out more advanced setup. As always, I'm going to change the default Wi-Fi network name and password and also make sure to change the administration password. Here is a quick look at the ZTE app for iPhone, which I have to say I wasn't expecting to have for such a cheap router and I'm really impressed with it. It lets you easily see what devices are connected, change settings, review what the current up and download bandwidth is, be, and has customized functionality to set and monitor your data usage limits. So if you don't go for an unlimited plan, you can keep track of what you've used easily and even have it send you a notification when you've used a percentage of your data that you can select. If you do have any problems, there's a very easy diagnostic tool that lets you identify which part of the MiFi or connection isn't working as you'd expect. So now we're connected and we've seen that everything is working well on the internal antenna. Let's head out to the van and see how it does on an external antenna. I'm using the antenna I recommended in our review video, which if you want to watch the full video, you can see the link here when it's the Bingfu twin mag mount antennas that we're going to use. These are currently £13.99 with a TS9 connector, which are what the ZTE MiFi has. So here we are with the unit inside the van and you can see we've got one bar of signal. When we run the diagnostics here, we do get a warning to check the signal strength. And when we run a speed test, we get 3.3 megabits per second down and 1.46 up. Now connecting the antennas, we see straight away an increase in signal strength on the screen. This is echoed in the app as well. And when we run that diagnostic test, this time we see a tick next to the signal strength. The speed test shows us we're getting five times the speed downloading at 15.8 megabits per second and 6.3 up. So overall, what do I think? Well, for the price, I am massively impressed. There are some areas where I actually prefer the ZTE to our Netgear MiFi. Yes, it lacks the guest network or five gigahertz Wi-Fi network. It doesn't have a touch screen, so everything has to be done in the app or browser, but neither of those things would be a deal breaker for me. It performs well, is user friendly and has all the features most people would need and is comparable to the routers provided in a lot of the motorhome Wi-Fi kits at three or four times the price. So if you're considering that impulse buy of a specific motorhome Wi-Fi kit, which clearly have a huge markup at £48.40 for MiFi and antennas, yes, you can get a quality mobile 4G Wi-Fi setup for less than 50 quid. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.